All right, if you have one of these Chevy trucks, this is a 1995 model. So I believe it's 1988 to maybe 99 that this encompasses. But I've read a lot of people that have trouble with their Chevy trucks hesitating. So like you'll, you'll step on the gas and it just won't have any power. This one would pass emissions, but then when you would step on it, it, uh, it would just kind of hesitate and not want to go. So these are some of the things I fixed. We fixed a ton of things on this truck and it's running great now. So the unfortunate thing is that your most likely cause is going to be the most expensive thing. So in this case, we replaced the fuel pump, which is on top of the gas tank. So you actually have to drop the gas tank out to put a fuel pump in it. So sometimes it's going to be low fuel pressure. In this case, also, we found that when I was in park with my foot on the brake at a stop sign, you'd hear rattling. And what that was, was the catalytic converter falling apart. So we put a new catalytic converter on it, the rattling stopped and it, it runs a lot better now. Um, other stuff, so I started with cheap stuff first that, 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 didn't, that helped but didn't really fix it. So there's a thing called a throttle position sensor that's on the side of your throttle body. Um, if you've got the throttle body injection like this one does. And the throttle position sensor basically tells the computer where your foot is on the gas pedal. So if that gets faulty, if you rep it'll it'll hesitate in the mid range instead of going the way that it should. So throttle position sus center, throttle position sensor is a suspect as well. Um, on this one, we also replaced the engine computer, and that made a difference. You have to take your old chips out and put your chips in it. So if on on these old Chevys. The trucks, I know on the vans, it's down by the floorboard. You got to remove this and it's back there. And on the trucks, it's real easy to, tip, to pop out the glove box to get at it and just replace it. But you have to open it up and take the computer chip out of your old one and put it in the new one. Because usually what goes bad on those is the motherboard circuitry rather than the what's on the chip. I believe you can also get hot rod chips to put in them if you want to hot rod your motor. I haven't really looked into that. I just want to get to get to work or school or wherever I'm going on time. Um, of course, other suspects would be the, the fuel injectors. On this one, I did replace the fuel injectors and rebuilt the uh, fuel pressure regulator. And that didn't help at all. It actually ran worse with the new injectors in it, I think because all that other stuff was clogged up and I did that before I replaced the fuel pump and the catalytic converter. Uh, the other thing to try first before you, were, before you would do the fuel pump would be if, if nobody's ever changed the fuel filter. Oh, it's real easy to find on these trucks. Oh, there it is. Why am I crawling under my truck? Yeah, so there you go. So your fuel pump is just that, that uh, metal can there along the frame rail. So you just unplug that, put a new one in. And now she runs like she's supposed to. Uh, looking great. Hey, feeling good. This is... Uh, how old is this now? 22 years old and going strong. So I hope that helped somebody out there. The trouble is when you have a, a weird problem like that, there were, there were no check engine lights either in my case. So you just had horrible hesitation when you step on the gas. Sometimes it would almost die. And uh, it would pass emissions, barely pass emissions, but it would still pass emissions. So if those are your symptoms, uh, no check engine light, but it does pass emissions, and it, it sometimes runs well and sometimes doesn't. If you hear the rattling, you know that that's your catalytic converter starting to go. Um, if you have somebody check your fuel pressure and find out your fuel pressure is low, on these the fuel pumps tend to go bad around 100,000 miles, so if you've got one that's, that's fairly old, you probably want to do that as a preventative maintenance anyway. Replace the fuel pump. The drag on that is it. I think they're $150 or $175 for a good one, plus you got to take the gas tank out, put it in the top of the gas tank, and then put it back in. So I hope this helps somebody out there. It's taken us oh, over a year of just randomly replacing parts to, to fix this problem. We also put a new distributor in. Uh, the mechanic I had helping me do all this was, was really frustrated and, and just started just swapping parts out, which, I, which is great because now we know we've got all new stuff. So the distributor, uh, when I changed the cap and rotor on this one, I saw that it had actually gotten kind of sideways. Like the, if you, you look down at the cap, you saw that it was worn out. It, it was spinning over here, but it should have been down lower, spinning over here. So it was making better contact with half of the terminals than it was with the other ones. Not sure why that was, but it was old and rusty and, and pretty well worn out. So that's another preventative maintenance measure that I'm happy we did. 
So it was cheaper than a new truck, but it was still time consuming and expensive to get this thing back to tip top shape. But in my opinion, this is pretty much the last generation of trucks that look like real trucks. You know, the bed is actually long enough to put stuff in. Some trucks now, the, the bed is actually shorter than it is wide. It's a, like a wrong way rectangle. So the last of the real trucks. We'll keep it running as long as we can. Hope this helps. Uh, any of you out there that are still having trouble with these and if you bought one of these really super cheap and you just found out that it was because of this problem look into replacing those things and see how she does thanks for watching hope this keeps you on the road for a few more years